as introverted as you are, uh, I am, I am a, a suffering extrovert. And so I apologize if I talk or move a little bit too quick. I have a lot of things to say about company culture. I'm very passionate about it. And there's a lot more slides in here that I actually have time for. So I'm going to take you on just a, I'm going to, I'm going to hit just a few of the most important pieces. Um, and then afterwards, we can have a more extensive conversation. So come find me during lunch. Um, and uh, happy to continue the conversation. So um, uh, my name is Josh Levine, co-founder of Culture Lab X, which is a uh, North American nonprofit. So we now have labs in uh, Canada as, as well as across the United States, um, really for, for uh, culture builders who want to come together and learn about company culture and advocate in advance for company culture as a strategic business advantage. Now, the reason why I am so passionate about company culture is because I believe, just like Beneveni does and just like all of you, that um, business is a force for good. And culture is the first and, I believe, most compelling um, sustainable uh, competitive business advantage that actually takes into account not only the company bottom line, but also the people who work at the organization. Okay. So to me, if we subscribe to the theory of capitalism and believe in the power of business, well, I believe culture is really where we need to focus our efforts in order to um, do the best that we can for all of the people who are engaged and benefiting from the organization. All right. So this quote, I believe, uh, um, encapsulates what I believe is the the power of culture at its highest level, right? And it's a quote from Antoine uh, Saint Exupéry, and it says, "If you want to build a ship, don't gather people to collect together wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the immensity of the sea." Right? So this is essentially that north star, right? This is what I believe culture can do. Okay. All right, so very quickly about me. I'm a Taurus. I used to want to be a marine biologist when I was a kid. Um, I had uh, dreadlocks um, a little bit longer ago now than, than, than not. Um, I really enjoy uh, cycling. I teach uh, company culture and a really interesting program uh, um, in San Francisco. And I have a, an entourage of children, um, a 10-year-old who looks like he's 15, and two twins who are like this big and with my big mouth and my wife's long red hair, it looks like a Cirque du Soleil parade when we're walking down the street. <laughs> OK. Company culture uh, is the North Star. Okay, I already told you about Culture Lab X. We're experimenting with the future of work. Lot, the, 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 the beginning of this journey for Culture Lab X and myself was really about, OK, how do we define company culture? Because it's such a fuzzy thing. It, it's a lot of things. And, and this is what Dr. Wikipedia says. And, and that's all well and good. I don't think it's wrong. I just don't think it's very helpful um, or useful necessarily. Because uh, uh, I'm more of like an, an action-oriented person. I want to apply. And so this is my preferred definition, right? It's the cause and effect of every decision we make. So it's a very concise statement that says a lot. All right, think about that. The cause and effect of every decision that we make. So while that is a good place to start, what I wanted to do was learn how to apply this inside of organizations. And so I love making models uh, of, of ideas and drawing and creating these charts. And so I came up with, with one of my co-founders, the six components of company culture. Okay? So this is the way that we understand the world. Now, and essentially, at first, we put this out to our community and said, hey, this is what we think it is. What do you think? It got really good reception, and we're really excited about it. I'm currently working on a book about it um, with a lot of really interesting case studies. But essentially, what we have here are the six pieces that I believe we need in order to create that inspirational um, North Star, that guide to move people in the right direction. Right? to help them um, really help us all come together to achieve what we want to achieve. Purpose, values, behaviors, recognition, rituals, and cues. The first three are about designing culture. The second three are about activating and managing culture. Okay? 
So what is, I think, one of the most important elements is purpose. So purpose is why we're in business beyond making money. Not instead of, but in addition to or beyond making money. And I believe that while not easy, it is a worthwhile task to establish our purpose in our organizations to be more than about the bottom line. And I believe that's what you all believe as well. That's what Benevity is helping us do. That's what we're all doing together. And what I would challenge you is to think even grander. And I love this idea of integrating, going across the, those different segments, right? How do we integrate our goodness? Let's go even further. How is the purpose of our organization going to benefit our world? It can be to help those um, folks that are underprivileged. It can be to help other people lift other people up or help them uh, achieve their own goals. But in any case, that purpose should be extremely uh, inspiring. So um, General Assembly is uh, just very quickly of quick little case studies. So General Assembly is this co-working kind of education space um, started in, uh, I believe it started in San Francisco. They have um, uh, co-working spaces in many cities across the, of the country. And what I love about them is that their purpose is creating a global community of individuals empowered to pursue the work that they love. And everything that they do is really to inform that. So when they have the, their staff staying late at night after they host our culture lab event, cleaning up and moving the tables back, they all know, even at that moment, right, that this is what they're trying to do. This is what they're shooting for. And I, I really appreciate that they have a very clear understanding of what they're, they're looking to do, right? So this, to me, is um, really is like the business strategy, like in, in one sentence, right? This is what we are doing. And I, and I, and I, just, I just really uh, love that, that piece of it. Values, if, if um, purpose is the North Star, values are our guideposts, okay? Values are about what we believe is important and almost as critical as what we, is what we include is what we leave out, okay? Because we can say all of these things are amazing, right? We can say, oh, we, we believe in... Um, doing good for the world, we also believe in having fun, and we also believe in collaborating, and yada, 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 yada. But what I would argue is that you need to be very decisive, and you need to draw a line around when push comes to shove, where do you believe um, those guidelines are? So Lego, they have one more than I prefer. I tell my clients, you need three to five values, no more, no less. However, I felt like this was good enough, and it really gives you a sense of where are they, right, when they make their decisions to achieve their goal, to head towards their purpose. How are they going to make those decisions? I think I really like the way that you guys had articulated the be bold going into the storm. That's really clear. That's really crisp. So when you're endeavoring on thinking about your values, think about how they can be unique which is the hard part, and compelling. Really understand who is it that we want to work with? How do we hire? How do we reward? Behaviors are the, really the center point, right? That's what we're trying to do. Culture is all about the cause and effect of everything that we do, the behaviors, right? So behaviors are actually how we act. So we set up our North Star, we set up our guideposts, we draw a line, and we say, that's the kind of behaviors that we want, right? That's the kind of decisions that we want, all right? So um, I will try to tell the story quickly. Um, does anybody know this? Does anybody have uh, uh, young girls in, uh, in, in their lives and they've, they've used this uh, or they've bought this toy, Goldie Blocks? So really cool, um, started by a, a woman engineer who really believed that um, more uh, girls needed to get into and understand, be able to understand the concepts of engineering. So she came up with this amazing toy company. She'd never run a company before in her life. Um, and this is their purpose. Amazing, right? Like, I can sign up for that, right? I'm excited to join this organization. And what I would say about the why, why this is here is behaviors is that she, um, early on in her career, uh, uh, 
uh, without <laughs> permission, used a song um, to promote their organization, and it was they, they did, didn't buy the rights, and they actually got into a lawsuit, uh, a, a, a multi-million dollar lawsuit uh, over it, and it was a big mistake for this first-time CEO. But what she did was she confronted it and said that they, 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 it was a real mistake and they settled the lawsuit. All of the money actually went to a, a charity, um, which is also another good piece of it. But what I love is that she actually put this, she got interviewed and put it on a video, and it's up on YouTube. And I love that you know, if you're thinking about like making mistakes, right, which is all part of engineering, she made a mistake. She didn't hide it. I love that idea. There's so many other ways that we can think about behaviors. There's a lot to it, um, and, and I, I don't have time to get into it, to it all. I haven't even figured it out. But this is one example of, I'm setting the precedent. This is the kind of behavior that we want. All right, how do we activate and support? Everybody knows un understands the concept of, of recognition. Right? So establishing whether we like it or not, we're kind of, we're, uh, uh, we're mammals and we, we have this group behavior, right? So what we want to do is say, these are the things that are good. These are the behaviors that we want people to actually rise to. Um, and what I would say, and I, I'm not going to go into this, into this all right now, I've, I've written a little bit about this, um, is there are actually many kinds of recognition programs. And I know that, that every one of you have a recognition program of one of these kinds of recognition programs. But I would urge you to think about, um, and again, we can talk about more about these, what other kinds of recognition programs are there, and how might they help you incentivize and promote those kinds of behaviors. Finally, um, rituals. Rituals are extremely important when we think about how do we scale company culture. How do we continue to grow, right, if we're doing all of these amazing things? A big challenge is how do I actually continue to stay connected and make sure that culture per is pervasive throughout the organization? Okay? So what, what I found in observing, doing a little bit of research, and um, talking to my clients is that um, the problem is in relationships and the number of relationships that we're able to have within an organization, right? So I argue, and I won't tell you why, but I argue that 50, you can hold about 50 good relationships um, uh, at any one time inside of your company, okay? After that, it takes a lot of energy to continue to build, which is why we want to stay in our own little bubble, because it just takes energy, right? And so rituals are the way that we continue to build and strengthen these, re these relationships, okay? Again, okay, I'm, a, I'm an MBA professor and I love my two by two, so here's yet another one. Um, four different kinds of way rituals that we can um, get into, uh, we, can, we can actually uh, activate and use to connect people um, inside of our organization. And finally, if we think about the six components, they're stacked up almost like a system, right? They're connecting. Cues is how we connect back to the larger picture. Cues are the visual, behavioral, um, verbal ways that we remind people why we're all in business. Why are we here? Connecting back to the purpose, right? And the vision of this organization. So if I worked at Benevity, all I would need to do is watch that video every once in a while, and there is this perfect cue, why are we doing this, right? What are we doing? How do I connect back to the vision of this organization? So think about how, once you've, uh, good job, you have a purpose, good job, you've established your values, how do you make sure people don't get bogged down in the day to day? Continue to inspire them and connect them back to the top of those six components. Oh, um, okay, Airbnb, I went there, visit a friend of mine, um, had lunch for free, free kombuchas, free uh, you know, coffee, it was, it was amazing. I was not gonna turn that down. Um, one of the things that I love, the cues that they provided, um, every conference room is actually decked out to look like one of their properties' rooms. Amazing, right? You are having a customer experience, you're connecting directly with the product, I love that. And it was so fun to sort of sit in the beanbag chair or you know, look out over a fake forest or wh whatever it was. 
Uh, it was such a cool cue. I felt like oh, that, was, that was amazing. I was like, kudos to you. That was excellent. All right. So um, uh, we have a quick at the, uh, uh, you all, I'm going to do this real quick. Uh, OK. This thing right here, so Benevity has uh, graciously uh, purchased for all of you um, the little folios that we actually created, sort of a precursor to the book, um, that you can all get at the check-in desk. So if you want one, they're there for you to take. Um, and they have uh, a quick brief on all of these things without the case studies, but at least it's something to, to take home. Uh, plenty more content on Cultural Lab X as well as um, on some of uh, my own sites. In that book at the back, of a quick, like, how are you doing culture report, right? So how, uh, how are you delivering? Do you have a purpose or not? Do you, you know, are you delivering on those values or not, right? Just a quick gut check into how are you doing? Where do you need to work, right? And it's really going to be really hard to get to those recognition if you don't have your values, right? Recognition is great, but if you're not connected to values, um, then they're kind of all over the place from quarter to quarter, as an example. All right, so in any case, um, oh, go forward. That's my uh, passionate plea for why company culture is uh, really important, and I'll be here all day. I'm really excited to talk to um, anyone who will listen and anybody who's interested <laughs> on uh, company culture, uh, and I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. We're, uh, we're going to have a, a Q&A uh, session at the end of that, so anyone who is interested can actually um, talk as well. Are, are you next? Yeah. I'm next. OK. Thanks. Deb Swartz is going to be next. And, uh, I'm going to stay seated. Oh, you're going to? That's fine. A little I'm, nervous. I'm, uh, um, before I start, can I just ask Allison and my team to take a picture of me? Because I think my husband and kids think I'm out doing uh, pedicures and <laughs> drinking margaritas and shopping and playing in the sand. That That's was all yesterday. they've seen, right? So, so I'm officially working. <laughs> I should have been holding a book or something. Right. <laughs> Phone. All right. So thank you. You know, when you were speaking, um, I realized a lot of the things during our journey uh, over the last uh, eight months or so, our, our Benevity journey at Accenture, I missed a lot of that. So um, I'm going to tell you our story of our transition to Benevity at Accenture in Canada. And I'm going to start by saying it wasn't perfect on our end. We've learned a lot, and I continue every day to learn from all of you that I get to talk to, but also internally on what worked and, and what we need to do better going forward. Um, so once again, I lead the corporate citizenship work for Accenture in Canada. Do anybody, uh, anyone in the audience know what Accenture is? OK. Oh, yay. <laughs> Usually they don't. So. <laughs> Accenture is a global management consulting company. We have about 380,000 people around the world. We focus on um, providing and working with our clients in technology, digital strategy solutions. The world's largest companies are our clients. Um, we are high performing. That's our tagline. So, you know, they're they're working at client sites. They're on airplanes. They're really, really smart and. I, I'm honored to be able to run this program and, and have people involved for Canada. So our, our global corporate citizenship program involves a number of things. And uh, a big stream is our skills to succeed, which our, our goal is to equip 3 million people through skills-based volunteering with skills to get, uh, you know, set up businesses or secure meaningful employment by 2020. And uh, other components of our giving program are, are grants and global giving grants, um, giving our time through, again, skills-based volunteering or non, and pro bono, and also our, our employee giving program. And so this is where my story starts. And I'll start by saying um, I moved into this role within Accenture about seven years ago. and. I think really did a great job transforming what we did in corporate citizenship in Canada. But one of the areas that, that bothered me was our employee giving campaign every year in the fall. And I don't know if some of you can relate to this, but we rocked with our volunteering, we rocked with giving grants, we have really meaningful relationships 
in the community and, and Accenture people are engaged and people on boards, you know, we're going along, but then every year we'd run our United Way campaign. And again, this is where I insert my disclaimer saying United Way is valuable to us. They will and always will be a, a very valuable partner. But what I found year over year, and I think some of you may have as well as I've been speaking with people, is declining participation in that annual United Way campaign. And when you think about our demographic of, of people, I mean, we're at client sites, we're a technology company, we're innovators, we're digital, and then every fall, the leadership announces you are donating to the United Way campaign, and it's for these two weeks in the fall, and here's our number we're going to reach. And to be recognized as a leader donator, or a donor, excuse me, um, your number must be this high in the amount that you will give. And so gradually, over and over, I'm, I'm hearing feedback, and I think this is a familiar story to some of you out there, that, you know, I want to I wanna do something different. I want my money to go where I want it to go. And I'll, I combated that with every, every way that I could to explain they still can through the tool. And then I, I listened, and I listened, and I watched our participation numbers go down, and I watched our dollars go down, you know, not dramatically, but enough to make me worried. When here we're doing amazing things in pro bono and granting and skills-based volunteering, but this piece of our program, I was continually challenged every year. So I think this is where I did a little bit of what, what you talked about, is I, I talked to people. I, what, would, what would you love? What would engage you? What would make you feel there's a larger purpose? What would, you know, what do you want? And again, this, you know, the average age is 30. We're hiring young folks out of university every week. These are our change makers. These are our future leaders. So what would make you happy? And it was, you know, give me a mobile solution. Um, let me do whatever I want where, where I am. If I'm at a client site and I don't have access to Accenture systems, I, I can do it on my phone, you know. Modern, be a little more modern. So uh, two years, two years of a project on my end. And I was a one-person show for Accenture at the time. And I thought, I need to start at the top. I need the, the most senior people to, to support this journey with me and pay for it. <laughs> How the heck am I going to do this? So I um, engaged our CEO, who has always been supportive of the corporate citizenship work that we do around the world, and a huge sponsor in Canada. And he assigned a, um, you know, a stakeholder team of our, our senior leaders. And, and I started data, 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 right? And said, this is what the potential is if we move to an open giving campaign. And I promise you that the United Way numbers <laughs> won't go down. And behind my back, I'm crossing my fingers, hoping this is going to work. And I'm going to set high, high targets. We're going to do this. So two years. So the first year, we, um, we just changed the name of our campaign. We ran a, a contest and said, let's, do, let's just change the culture by naming it something different. Instead of saying the United Way campaign, let's, let's do something. So My Giving Canada was the contest winner's name, um, or the name they suggested. And that aligned nice with our other naming conventions of everything else that we do with my learning and my earnings and my whatever. So the following year, we ran our annual United Way campaign, and we used the United Way tool. Well, we called it My Giving Canada, and we encouraged people to give to the charity of their choice. And um, what do you think happened? So our numbers declined to an all-time low, and leadership was like, "What you doing?" <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, "You know what? This isn't this isn't changing. This isn't listening to our people. This isn't going to make things better." I get it. We have to protect the relationship. We have very senior relations with United Way. They do wonderful things for us and us of them in the community. They're, you know, we're deeply involved, but. This has got to change. So through more persistence, I had approval to move our giving, you know, this is just giving, um, portfolio to Spark. And so, um, again, I, I really 
didn't know what I was doing. I really just said, this is going to work. I believed from talking to all of you out there, not all of you, but many of you who are more experienced in the um, software than I am, believing what I heard from our people and believing what I do know about culture and engaging people, this is the answer. And so now it was up to me to do this. So implementation, let's do this. My Giving Canada was a name, created a communications strategy, and everything was designed around the word imagine. Because we wanted people to imagine being able to sit in the airport, sit at their client site, do it at home, whatever. Be able to imagine multiple donations going to where they wanted it and all the goodness that comes with those stories. So Allison here uh, that works with me is really the uh, brains behind so much of the success and created this communication strategy that got attention. And then our user acceptance testing, we used all, people in all of our 10 cities across Canada. So people who are United Way participants to do the testing. And the feedback started coming in about, this is so cool, this is so neat. So we customized the look and feel of our platform with real pictures of their colleagues and themselves doing good. I see some of you nodding your heads did the same thing. So then they started, I don't even know if they knew it was a third party platform at this point, because it's cool and this kind of stuff, what we do at Accenture. So people were getting excited and I was getting nervous. So then um, we, we, we set up teams in each of our sites. So again, our formal United Way teams became My Giving Leads. And then My Giving Leads, we fed them with all of the change in approach. So, so once again, this is our fall pledge that we ran in the fall, but we're now working with a year-round giving tool, and that was different. And, you know, things that, you know, little differences between platforms, or major differences, I guess I should say, between platforms, we needed to think about how we're going to explain that in the locations, how those, those um, leaders who were doing this as volunteers were going to explain this at the locations. But first, we took a step back and uh, learned from a few other companies that a leadership campaign should be separate. Do any of you do leadership campaigns during your uh, giving times? Okay, yeah. So we thought, let's do a leadership campaign. Engaged the CEO again, um, launched a two-week leadership campaign prior to the all-employee campaign, and uh, it was busy. It was really, really busy. Our CEO took it so seriously and, and was so passionate about having his people participate while protecting the United Way. We featured United Way all the time. And then we had managing director partners pick their campaign leads in their cities to promote for those leaders to donate. It was out of control busy. Questions, craziness. So with our leadership, I, I mean, our CEO was so engaged at some points, I had to say, you do your job, <laughs> and I'll do my job, and I'll keep you posted. But it was so intense. And then, again, a little bit nerve-wracking on my end, because I said I wanted 90% of our leaders to give. That's, to me, realistic. So needless to say, um, the leadership campaign was extended a few times. And we more than doubled our participation at the leadership level. So our, not meaning dollars, meaning level, our most senior people, which was remarkable. These guys are extremely busy, and they took the time to engage in our program, and it more than doubled. And this was our first year, not quite sure what we were getting into, speaking with confidence, convincing everyone this would work. Our all-employee campaign launched. And those teams on the ground, man, they were ready to go. They had everything, you know, pie in the face things, um, bake sales, dress downs. And again, think of our demographic. People are out of the office. They're not all there. So to engage people, it's tough. So through various really creative communications, um, we tripled our participation rate in our giving campaign this year. <laughs> so, 
So I'm now the most popular girl in high school at work. <laughs> but you know, I think we made lots of mistakes. We we are are. I mean, it's not an event anymore. That's the big thing I needed to learn. Um, involving people much, much earlier in the process. The two years I spent convincing people to pay for this and why this was a good idea should have been spent on the change management that's needed for our people who still think it's an annual fall pledge only and still are looking for the things they used to see in the former tool. So two years, I mean, we're change management experts, I didn't think of that, so that was a mistake. Um, um, I mean, overall, over-communicating is another thing we should have done, uh, more so recognition. We did um, quite a bit of recognition with the, the teams on the ground that were organizing things, but in hindsight, I believe we needed to do more. Our CEO has sent out personal thank yous to everybody that was involved, but it's ongoing. So I think a big lesson is this is ongoing. It's year-round. It's that excitement shouldn't just happen at, in the fall. It needs to be ongoing. Um, and we've opened up our volunteering on the tool for one location, and we plan on trans transitioning all of our volunteering over the next couple of quarters um, onto the tool as well. So overall, uh, I've, I'm thrilled. Um, I set some crazy targets. We didn't meet all of them, and I knew we wouldn't, but it got the right attention at the right levels of engagement that we needed. And I just can't wait to continue the journey with all of you on uh, the future. So if you have any questions, I'm around shopping, pedicures, <laughs> drinking margaritas. Um, but yeah, so thank you. That's great, Deb. I, for what? I, for, I forgot one important point, sorry, was the entire focus was on participation, not on dollars. We never once set a dollar target at the location level, at the level of person you are, which was the culture in the past. And so we exceeded dollars donated. Then we had, we're back where we were years ago. And our United Way donations were higher than they've been in years. So again, magic, but it, it works, so. Yeah, I, w I was gonna Sorry. say, I, I mean, you know, you saw some of that data. I, I think we've, we've got a couple of clients that are kind of in your, experiential category and, and, and one who's now been with us for three years and they went from a United Way only sort of experience and uh, their, their data now shows that their um, uh, overall participation rate is up almost 300%. Uh, their volunteering is up almost five, 500%. And importantly, their United Way contributions are up 72%. So, um, you know, it's not an or, it, it, it's an and, and you're, you're raising uh, all the boats. So that's a, a great story. So, Diane, what can you tell us about? Wow. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, time check. How are we and how much time do I have? I have no idea. It's just kind of going. We're, we're three doesn't. over. So. <laughs> three minutes, 35 seconds over. So we're making sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that what that was? Yeah. <laughs> 10? 10 to 50? OK. Just want to make sure we're on track. I <laughs> think there's a, you know, we've got washrooms both ways, but, you know, you're stuck in the room right now with me. Um, <laughs> Anyway, thanks. I'm Diane Solinger, and I am from Google, and part of Google.org. I lead our employee giving and volunteering for us globally. And I think many of you may know of the Google culture, or have heard of it, or have had rumors, or have stopped by for a free kombucha, or a coffee, or lunch. Um, but uh, the culture, I've been there almost five years, and the culture at Google is um, really something that you not only hear about, but once you walk in the doors, you feel it. It's all around you. And, um, and I talk about this, the this things you mentioned, the six kind of things around culture and um, that define it. I mean, the purpose of our company has always been a socially, you know, it's a social purpose. We're here to get the world's information to everyone and make it usable and universally accessible. And that's a huge mission, but it's so powerful, and it galvanizes all of us within the company. Um, and our leaders embody that. Um, you know, probably shouldn't talk out of school, but our CEO was just on a visit uh, across APAC, and you know, he, he's out in villages in rural India. He's in the cities. He's looking. He experiences that, and then he tells us the story back 
of why we are on this mission, and we're still on it. Um, it's very palpable, and it makes us all, I think, you know, over, we've got the Benevity numbers, too, at Google, as big as we are. People are incredibly proud to be there, and that sense of purpose is there every day for us. We forget it sometimes, and we get it resurrected through some of the rituals that we have on a weekly basis. Our two founders and our CEO, and when our entire C-suite is in town, maybe they're not all there, but they're almost there, Every week on Thursday, we have a company meeting to this day. A couple times a year, they'll throw in a party instead. But every week, we have an opportunity to ask our leaders open questions at an open mic. We have this transparent culture where you can put the, if you're not in the room, you can put a question up. If you're sitting in Dublin, for example, or somewhere else around the world, that question will go up on what we call our internal dory. And those questions are answered, whether they're answered live or afterwards. Every question gets answered every week. Our internal comms people make sure of it. And if it needs to come from our CEO, it's not someone writing it for him. Sundar does that personally. There is this sense that we own this company and we walk those values every day. Um, and we see that transparency of communication and ownership with our leadership and with every employee. Um, you know, maybe I'm exaggerating, but I actually believe this and I feel this and I think most of our people do. Um, Many of you have heard probably of our value of don't be evil. Um, our VP of culture, when she was in the room with our founders and um, one of our former advisors who passed away a little while ago, Bill Campbell, um, said she would have, she really wished that Sergey Brin had said do the right thing instead of don't be evil. But that really does speak to what we're about. I think another core value for us is put the user first. User trust for Google is imperative to our business, but for us, in my role and my team, our user is the Googler. It's our employee. Always putting ourselves in someone else's shoes, as my mother told me as a kid. Put yourself in their shoes, walk in those shoes, understand what they need, and serve others. That's a value that we have across the company with our products, but in our team and what we're trying to do to amplify giving and volunteering, we always try to put ourselves in the shoes of our users, of our Googlers. Um, and so service to others, I think, is something that is uh, a core value to what we stand for at Google. I think another thing is it's for everyone. It, we didn't start Google as a local company. It was born as a global company. And by God, if our programs aren't go global from the instant, I'm going to hear from that random Googler in the Ukraine who Ashley had to deal with over there for like months. Um, great guy, wants you know giving in the Ukraine. That's a tough jurisdiction to do some vetting on. And thank you, Benevity, for helping us. Um, but you know we had to live up to that value that it is for every Googler and for everyone. This is information for the world. These are programs for every Googler. Um, Recognition, very important. Recognizing the, those people that are in those offices that step up and help us with the implementation of these programs. Um, and also this sense that people can be recognized in different ways. I think of um, giving and volunteering as tools in a toolkit to enhance the Google culture and to bring out goodness in everyone. It's not the end, it's a piece of the puzzle. And um, our giving week, campaign is really based on that. It's maybe not recognition, but it's a way for people to step forth and share their own personal story of an organization that means something to them. We have focus areas at Google, just like many companies do, some social impact focus areas that we're trying to get more intentional behind. But these campaigns we do, these kind of culturally iconic Googler engagement campaigns, like our volunteer month, which is called Google Serve, and our Giving Week in December, are really Googler initiated. For Giving Week, a Googler can put up their favorite organization. They can share their story in a gallery. And other Googlers are invited to join them. The Googlers put down, who are sponsoring these organizations, put down money of their own. And then the Googlers, they invite to join, give, and then Google matches it. So it's like a 3x kind of story. And there, I, the thing that's wonderful about it is you get to know your, you know your fellow employees, your fellow Googlers, through these unique stories. Like this guy, Chris Pennington, I didn't know his wife had cancer, and I worked with Chris for years. Um, and he raises money for um, what, Cycle for Survival every year. So there's this sense of connection. And I know a little bit more about that person. And that creates culture, especially since you know, I've been at Google almost five years, as I mentioned. 
When I joined, we were about 32,000 people, and we're over 70,000 people right now, and it's not stopping. So these types of programs are ways for us to increase that cultural fabric within the company and ensure that we um, make it a place for everybody to bring their whole selves to work and using giving and volunteering as a way to do that. Um, a couple things just to wrap up, I think, because I want to give us time for Q&A. Um, this sense of balance I, I am between choice and focus. We are, we're interesting. I think a lot of companies started with, oh, these are our focus areas and we're doing X, Y, and Z and everybody get on that boat, we were the other way. We were all Googler-initiated, grassroots, it's part of our culture. And now, I think we've inculcated giving and volunteering to the point where, I mean, as we keep growing, we're still over 60% participation in these programs and, and holding steady and growing. I think giving and volunteering is in the fabric. Now we're trying to see what can we do with this great group of philanthropists and try to get behind focus areas. So we're coming at it a little bit differently than maybe a lot of companies have. And trying to strike that balance between Googler choice and Googler initiated efforts. And where we'd love to see us take the magic of our philanthropic dollars plus our Googler talent and our products to have more social impact. And we're working on that kind of integration model right now. And it's, it's change management and a little tricky. But I think we're going to have that balance over time. One area where we do a lot combined with our philanthropic dollars and Googler engagement is in crisis relief um, and the expediency in which we can spin up a crisis campaign that usually comes from a local office or two weekends ago came from an executive order from Donald Trump. Our employees are empowered to just go and we need to move fast. And we spun up an emergency campaign for immigration and refugee support on a Sunday. It was sent out by our CEO at nine-ish at night Pacific time. By noon the next day, that campaign was done, and we had raised $4 million. So those, again, that's very cultural for us but it's that balance. Where are we going to put our efforts with our philanthropic grants? Where is it going to be an employee activation? How do we balance those things out? Where does our leadership come into that? And that sense at Google that if you have an idea, you can email the CEO and you can expect an answer and you are empowered to own this company. Giving and volunteering is now, I think, really just integrated into the fabric of the company, and we're trying to take it to that higher level of greater social impact moving forward. Thanks. That's great. Thank you. Uh, I think it's it's really interesting the way that you have you know you state that you've got it now in the in the fabric uh, of of the company's culture, and it it sounds to me like that with the choice piece is what enabled you to engage people in that fashion. And now you're in a position where you can start to mobilize those people in directions that, that um, are more voluntary than if you'd flip it around the other way around. You, thou shalt give to these four kind of impact areas. So we see that a lot. We've got like two minutes for, for questions. I apologize I wasn't controlling the time better, but uh, um, I didn't understand. <laughs> the clock. Um, any, any any questions for for any any of the team up here? I can barely see. Yes. Yeah, um, Diane, you said you had a Google Space, and you said you have something else, but I didn't catch the. So Google Serve is our month of volunteering. That's one big campaign we do globally, and then Giving Week, which is uh, so one's focused on volunteering, one's on charitable dollars. Um, they're kind of these big moments in the company where everybody in and. And giving and volunteering, of course, happens throughout the year for us. And whenever someone wants to make a donation, request a match, or volunteer, they're able to do that. They can create their own volunteer projects. They can ask others to join them. Um, they can ask other people to give with them. Uh, that's throughout the year. But we have these kind of campaign moments. Are those campaign moments like consistent year over year? They are. Yeah. Google Serve will be 10 years this year. And Giving Week is going into its fifth year, I believe, maybe six. Yeah. I actually had a, had a quick question for the group. A, a lot of what Josh is talking about and what, what I was talking about and indirectly, uh, Diane and Deb, um, around culture, and it's sort of predicated on having some involvement with the HR function in your companies. I wondered how many of you report into the people function 
of, of your company? Still not very many. Hey, I, I wondered what the, the panel thought about whether, whether that is something that you see for the citizenship type function um, evolving either sort of dotted line or, or transitioning. I know that I'm dotted line now. Yeah. <clears throat> was in HR until November. So this integration piece I mentioned, we're part of Google.org, which is the philanthropic org uh, of, at Google, um, and we're knitting it together mm -hmm. because we were in all these different teams. And so um, dotted line into the VP of culture still within people ops, HR for Google. And um, I think the things we're looking for out of these programs are to you know, maintain, sustain, continue to grow the culture of giving and philanthropy at Google. But we're looking for these big kind of social impact wins where we know, like last year, there was an investment from Google.org into UNICEF. <coughs> Um, but UNICEF came to us first saying we need Google engineers to help us do some data analysis and mapping around the Zika virus and help us with the product. Then Google.org came in with the money. And it was like this magic moment. And we're like, we need more of these. Mm -hmm. And so the, the human capital sometimes is as or if not more important than the philanthropic dollars. And we're trying to knit that together. So I think that the culture piece isn't going away at all. But the, the, we're trying to have those social impact wins at the high end with some big investments. And that's why we're going to be dotted line into HR. Yeah. Not going to lose that. I, I said, no, no, no. We have to stay <laughs> attached. And, and Deb, just from a, a consulting perspective, I, I, I don't see, obviously, there's a ton of consultancy in the employee engagement area. Um, I don't see a, a ton of those consultants accessing tools like this as part of that exercise. Is that something that you hear anything about um, in your business? Um, you mean accessing giving tools? Well, just the idea, you know, so people who come in and consult about employee engagement are, <laughs> are often just focusing on rewards and recognition or some of the more traditional or measuring it. Um, but, you know, this stuff actually is a lever to impact it, yet mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to be something that an employee engagement consultant is coming in and helping with. Right, yeah, no, I agree. I think, um, well, I know for Accenture in Canada particularly, it's moving there. Mm -hmm. And we're accessing other uh, tools, such as return on investment of volunteering <laughs> and relating that into engagement and culture with HR. So I think it's going there, but it, it's gradual, at least for us. Any other, any other questions? Yes, I can barely see. <laughs> jealous and um, there's very similar culture when it comes to your company's young millennial technology. Um, is there anything you might share um, to the audience when you might have a culture that you have disconnected employees or you have, you know, we talk about millennials but there's some of us who are also working and um, do you have any sh uh, stories to share? And I think, Debbie, for you, a, a little bit of your story sound like you had a great program that was kind of needed to be refocused again, and you, you've got that focus back. So I just, everything is fascinating and great up here. Some of us in the audience might not have what you have, so what words might you share? Human-centered design. <laughs> ask your users, ask your employees. Bring them into the, into the design of how this is going to evolve. Um, you know, we do these workshops within Google all the time. We also do it with nonprofits all the time to just do the moonshot blue sky thinking and come out with some prototypes and you've got people invested in the process that are actually going to be in the programs. They're helping you design that. I think that, that is a great way to try some things, launch them, iterate, move along, and then maybe over, like it took you two years, like then you get to a place where people have been invested in the process and it's their program, it's not yours, it's theirs. I was gonna say almost exactly the same thing, which is what is it that they need, right? Like what, so the Xers, the boomers, right? Other folks in different countries, whatever it is, don't try to guess for them. And then I love this idea, right? You're bringing them into the process and then guess what? They're the champions and start small, 
because it's it's you gotta have you're gonna have a lot of mistakes along the way, and you're gonna have to then just start small, make make a big difference in a small area, get those people engaged, and then allow that to grow, and then all of a sudden everybody will go, what's happening over there, right? Like I want that as opposed to like, hey everybody, here's the thing. Uh, that would be, right, like then you can kind of see what gets picked up and what's interesting. The other common thread, you know, between these two stories is, is senior level support, um, mm -hmm. which is perhaps easier said than done. But, uh, I, you know, the good news is I, th I think the software platform is flexible enough to address the different demographics that you have. It's not a millennial only sort of a, a, an mm -hmm. approach, but um, it, it is a, a tough task to try and be all of the things to all of the people. Um, unfortunately, I've got like six zeros here, so I, I, better, uh, I better cut it short before Sona uh, strings me uh, up here. Here she comes. So thanks so much. Here she comes. <laughs> are you gonna come up and talk, or what are, what are you doing? No, I was, just gonna, I was just gonna thank all of you guys for this morning. I think that was a, a great morning. Definitely energizing a great start. So thank you, and thank you, Brian. Do, uh, do we get hats? Because <laughs> I have a pin head. I will not wear a cowboy hat. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> no, you will not get a hat then. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much. We're going to take a quick break. Um, so let's do 10 minutes. Uh, again, the bathrooms are out to the left That's and good. the right. Water is at the back. Yeah. We're in California, so we don't do jugs of water on the table. So um, grab your water um, and come back and meet us in 10 minutes. Thanks, guys. <laughs>